Uh, let's go now to Parliament, where MPs are set to vote in the next few hours on the second reading of David Seymour's end-of-life choice bill, which would allow a doctor to give lethal injections to people requesting euthanasia. At the first reading, MPs voted it through 76 to 44, and this time round, there's still a small number of MPs that are undecided. If those MPs vote the way they did last time, the bill would pass 70 to 50. But some MPs say they're concerned that the bill's provisions don't protect the vulnerable from abuse. Labour MP Kiri Allen voted in favour last time but has now changed her mind over those concerns and we're hoping to speak to her shortly. Whereas National MP Judith Collins, who voted against the bill at the first reading, will now vote in favour of it and she is on the line now. Good evening, Judith. Good evening, Lisa. What changed your mind? Well, it's been troubling me all year. I've been very concerned that uh, from from instances of other people's family members who have died in appalling um, situations, that what I had always thought was available to people, which was to request morphine plus more morphine because of pain, wasn't always going to be available to them. And the other thing is, Lisa, this bill has been, this, this reading tonight is just a vote to get it through to what's called a committee stages of yeah. the whole House. And the Select Committee has been looking at this for, I think, around about four years in total. The bill has not had the substantive changes made by the Select Committee that you'd normally expect would be made to deal with the concerns about coercion, uh, all sorts of concerns that people would rightly have. And that seems to have been more to do with the committee rather than what submitters wanted. This mm. bill, I think, deserves to go to the next stage of getting the changes made that David Seymour has shown me that he wants to make to the bill. And these have been drafted along by Parliamentary Council's office so that they are done absolutely correctly. OK, well, let's, let's look at some of that those. issue, Judith, because obviously yeah. you'd be aware some legal experts say, and there's a growing list of concerned lawyers, mm -hmm. who say that um, it doesn't protect, as it stands, doesn't protect vulnerable older people from coercion. Um, Judith ablett clerk QC, well-known, highly respected, says it's a real issue when you've got vulnerable people. Grant Illingworth, QC, raised similar concerns. You're a lawyer. Do you share those concerns? Well, that's why I'm concerned to make sure that the bill gets to the stage where those uh, coercion issues can be addressed properly. And as I said, if the select committee had been acting in the way in which select committees normally act, they would have been uh, put into the bill at that stage. This is something that's always concerned me and it's why I've always previously voted against any form of euthanasia on the basis of the coercion factor. And the changes that David Seymour showed me and which he has not yet got in the bill mm. and Parliament needs to put those in, I believe would go a long way towards addressing them. I have said to him that I will not guarantee a vote in the third reading unless those changes are made unless I'm satisfied that they will deal with that adequately. But the playing politics over this or using the select committee process to stymie very sensible and decent changes that many people would think were right, I think is disappointing and I'm not quite sure how that happened, but I am happy to do my bit to help get that remedied. Is, is your colleague Maggie Barry playing politics with this? Well, I don't know. I'm sure she's not. I think it's very important, though, that people understand these these votes are the worst possible votes when it comes for members of parliament because this is our very raw, very real beliefs. And I'm sure Maggie Barry is showing her very real beliefs. My beliefs are is that I felt a lot better about this decision after I'd made the decision and phoned David Seymour in the weekend, having first checked from some members of the committee just why the changes weren't made, or as best as they could tell me, and I felt a lot better about the decision which was to vote for this bill at this stage and to help make it a better bill if it goes forward. Yeah, but your colleague says it can't be fixed. Maggie Barry says it can't be remediated. Well, that's her. 
Yeah, but Lisa, that's her personal view. And we are not, we're all colleagues in Parliament Mm. when it comes to conscience votes. I mean, there will be people in every party voting various ways, particularly within Labour and National, because we have very free votes. And my view is, I don't take any of these things personally, but my personal experience in terms of, you know, what other people say, but other members of Parliament say, but my personal experience as someone who held my father's hand 25 years ago as, morphine was surging through him and he passed away from cancer. Not everyone has that experience. He was someone who was given a decent death because he was lucky enough to go into a hospital where he said, I've got a lot of pain, I need morphine. And his family, including me, were there able to say, yes, please give our dad the morphine he needs. And within a day, he had passed away having already said goodbye to everybody and at no stage losing his dignity. I am appalled by some of the terrible things that happen to people. People shouldn't have to go through that. Judith, I think Kitty Allen is on the line as well. Let's um, bring her into the conversation. Kitty, you you have changed your mind on this as well. So you're a no this time round, yeah? Yeah, I am, Lisa, and I just want to acknowledge the thing that um, uh, Judith has just said as well, look, I think for all parliamentarians this has been an issue. We are dealing with matters of life and death. And I think just I, I want to acknowledge the diligence that members across the House have shown in terms of their consideration for these, you know, these really tough, mm. tricky issues. Um, uh, for me, yeah, I have changed from a yes at that first reading to a no. And for me, I think where I landed and... Um, Look, there's, there's things that happen in our personal lives and that, that make you consider, and we've got some challenging decisions, uh, perhaps that Maggie, uh, sorry, that Judith has just been through in my own family. But where I sort of landed, and it has been a line ball call, um, is I just, at the moment, I don't feel that the piece of legislation that we've been asked to vote on tonight has really thought through the implications in terms of those uh, that are most vulnerable within our communities. And um, I had some serious hesitations. And when I made my decision at that first reading, I said, well, I'll vote yes and uh, let's let it go through the select committee process. Let's see what the bill is that comes back to us before the House and I'll make a considered uh, decision then. My key concern at that time was around uh, those that are most vulnerable, those that need mm. a bit of protection and making sure that, that law was going to be robust. I understand Mr Seymour has... Uh, he has uh, drafted an SOP and I've read that and I think it goes some part towards addressing some of the concerns. Right. That's not the SOP that we're that okay. we've been asked to vote so, on tonight. So. so, Kitty, the thing is, I mean, Judith has mentioned the fact that she is going to vote for it this time round so that the, she can see the changes and she can see if it comes up to a level that she is comfortable for. Um, she's not committing to supporting at um, the third reading. You could do the same, couldn't you? You could just let it play out and then make your final decision after all the changes are made. Yeah, and I think essentially, I, I think I probably went through that process at the first reading. It was like, look, okay, this is the bill that's for us. Let let it go through. Let's get the feedback. Let's uh, you know read the research. Let's look at what's happened internationally, and see where things land at the second reading. And I and I I vacillated, and I have in terms of my position because I am not anti euthanasia. I'm not, but I am very much concerned about ensuring that those. That uh, that may not want this uh, uh, this piece of legislation or this choice to impact them personally. I want to make sure that they are, are being protected. And look, yes, I could send it off and, and let it go through the committee of the whole. And if that's the will of Parliament tonight, I've said and I've been open about this. Whatever comes back to us at that third reading, again, I'll go through the same process and assess it. The bill that is before us in the House, I'll vote on what that bill is uh, and, and make my considerations at that time. But okay. for me, of the utmost importance is just that our vulnerable people in our communities are protected. Judith, can I bring you back in here? Sure. Do, you, do you think that we're having a factual debate about this, that that's a factual debate going on in the House, or are people um, uh, running amok with emotion? Nothing wrong with running amok with emotion, uh, Lisa, on issues like this. I think You know, look, I respect everyone's views on this. I know how people um, 
take this issue incredibly seriously. But it's also, um, I think, you know, that uh, what I would say to Kerry, and, you know, I respect Kerry. She's a, a very, very diligent member of Parliament, and I think she's got a great future ahead of her. It's that David Seymour's changes um, could have gone through the select committee, but for some reason they didn't. And that's not a criticism of anybody, but what it is, it's a reality. Look, I'm, I'm, well, I'm someone's responsible, responsible for the changes not going through well, the select committee, aren't well, they? So who? The, well, well, I'm not on the select committee, so I don't know. But what I do know is that I and others have an opportunity to give these changes um, a fair go and to go to that next stage. I mean, it takes a long time for legislation, the normal course of events, not always, but the normal course to go through Parliament. And I just think that it's nothing's more emotional than these, these issues. And that's, you know, since I've been in Parliament, this issue has come up on numerous occasions. And this is the first time I have felt compelled to vote for it, and that is because I think the changes that David Seymour wants to make, and if we let him make them, uh, that will make it will make a, a better piece of legislation that will provide protection for the vulnerable people. Thank you to you both. We've got to leave it there. That's Judith Collins and Kitty Allen, who have both uh, changed their views on that piece of legislation.